All right, here we go with our notes for chapter 11, lesson one, over areas of parallelograms and triangles. Now, we are also going to be talking about perimeter as we go, and we did a lot of the uh, preliminary work on this material in class, and most of you have started on these examples already and probably have example one completed correctly but we're going to go through these kind of quickly but I will give some step-by-step -step instructions in case you need to be able to um, to understand how I got the things I got a little bit more clearly if you don't um, if you don't feel that you need to know how to do it as much if you got it right the first time then you can kind of just skip ahead into the video to the next part um, just make sure you're kind of following along um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to present to you what the answers should be and then I'm going to go back and tell you how you got those answers so that if you get the correct answer the first time and you understand how I got that you can skip ahead to the next part all right so if we look at um, our first two ideas here, the area of a parallelogram, area of a triangle, we talked about area of a parallelogram is just base times height. Remember, base and height are always perpendicular. We would never consider this diagonal measurement to be the height of a parallelogram. Same kind of thing for a triangle, the base and height are always perpendicular. Now sometimes we might be able to turn that triangle around. If the right angle were to be up here, we could use this as our base, this is our height, or vice versa. But those are the formulas for area and perimeter again is just adding up all the sides okay so here are the answers you should get for example 1a and b and then once you check those I'll walk through how I got each one for example 1a the perimeter of the parallelogram is 104 inches and the area is 512 inches sorry that's 512 square inches for that area and for 1b the perimeter is 88 meters and area is 405 square meters so let's take a look at how we would do that if you're confident you know how you got these answers and you got them right and you feel comfortable moving on go ahead and skip to example two otherwise these are the steps we should follow the first thing you need to find um, after finding perimeter perimeter we're just going to add up the sides our u is 20 so is st because their opposite sides are congruent and then ut is also 32 and so we can add those four up and get 104 for our perimeter all right 32 times 2 sorry plus 40 times 2 that will give you 104 but then to find our area we need that height measurement h which is a leg of a right triangle so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem all right we're going to say that 12 squared plus h squared equals 20 squared 12 is 144, 20 squared is 400, okay, and when I subtract 144 from both sides, we get h squared is 256, and take the square root of both of those, and you get h is 16. Since h is 16, our area is base times height, which our base is 32, times our height of 16 is what gives us 512. Okay, very similarly here, to get the perimeter, we're going to add up two 27s, 27 and 27, plus two of our 17s. And that's how we get 88 meters. But for area, we need to take our base, 27, times that height, which we have to find, again, using Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus h squared equals 17 squared. Okay, and that's 289 minus 64, then. That's how we get h squared is 225, which means that h is 15. Since h is 15, that's what we multiply by our 27 length base, and that's how we get 405 square meters. All right, that leads us to example two. Okay, this is time for example two, so stop forwarding the video if you get to this. All right, example two. We want to find perimeter and area of the parallelograms below and round our answers to the nearest hundredth if necessary, and I'll show you why that's necessary as we go through this. You might have had a little more trouble with this one. 
So I'm going to go ahead and work these out. Uh, if you want to keep going ahead until you get to the answers to check your work, you can. But I'm going to start from the beginning on how you would work these out. We want perimeter and area. Okay, perimeter is 2 times this side of 12. They do imply that SR is full length 12. Plus, I want to do, sorry, 2 times this side of 9. So we can go ahead and just figure that out. 2 times 12 is 24. 2 times 9 is 18. 24 plus 18 is 42. And then it will give me a unit of measure, so that is my perimeter. All right. But then I want to be able to find the area, which means I need to know my base times height. The base is 12, but I need to know the height. And they don't give me that, and they also don't give me a whole lot to go off of because I don't know what this leg of that triangle is. So I can't really use Pythagorean theorem, but they give you that it's a 45 degree angle. So there's two ways you can do this. We can use our special right triangles, because if that's 45, then if this is H, that's a leg. The other leg is also H, so that height is the same as that. Or I can use Sokoto. I can use trigonometry. Either way, we're going to get the same thing. All right. And so since the relationship between a leg and the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is that the leg times root 2 equals the hypotenuse, I know H times the square root of 2 has to equal 9. So we divide both sides by radical 2. Okay, and I'm just going to say that h is 9 over radical 2. I'm going to leave that for my calculation because I don't need to rationalize that. I don't have to multiply top and bottom by root 2 because I'm going to keep on doing a calculation. So I'm just going to plug that in. My area is 12 times 9 over root 2. And then I can just put it into the calculator as 12 times 9, hit equals, and then divide by the square root of 2. And when I do that, I get approximately an area of 76.37. Rounded to the nearest hundredth, two decimal places. All right, so that's what we get for our perimeter and area. Part B, we're going to work out very much the same way. Okay, perimeter should be pretty easy because these sides are 11, these sides are 5. You can find perimeter. 11 and 11, 5 and 5, that's 22 plus 10, that's 32 meters. Perimeter is pretty straightforward. It's area that requires a little bit of calculation because we need to know the height of the parallelogram. In doing so, we're going to use a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, this is the hypotenuse. Remember that the relationship between the short leg and the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 is that the short leg is half the hypotenuse, so that's 5 over 2, and then the short leg and the long leg has a relationship of taking that short leg, 5 root 2, I'm sorry, 5 over 2, and multiplying by the square root of 3. So I'm going to leave that as my value, 5 over 2 square root of 3, and we're going to plug that into our base times height model. Base is 11 times the height of 5 over 2 square root of 3, and again, you could be using trigonometry instead. It's that you're going to get decimal value based on that root 3, just like you get a decimal value of your sine, cosine, or tangent. If you want to know how to do that, you can come ask me in class. But this is how this is going to give us our answer. And then I'm going to plug that into the calculator at this point and round my answer to the nearest hundredth. All right, and we should get about 47.63 square meters. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next set of examples, our example three and example four. All right, this is going to be a little bit easier to work with, um, and maybe you guys figured this one out already, so I'm just going to show you answers again, and then I will explain how I worked it out. That way, if you can move on past um, the explanation to example four, you can fast forward a little bit and do that. All right, here's what we should get for the perimeter and area of this triangle. All right, perimeter is the one that's a little bit tricky here, and that gives us about 49.50 when you round to the nearest hundredth centimeters. And here's how we did that. I'll explain this real quick here. Um, this side length is the hypotenuse of this invisible 9 by 9 right triangle. Well, that's a 45, 45, 90 if these are both 9s, and then it has to be 9 root 3. Or, again, if that's confusing you, just do Pythagorean theorem. 9 squared plus 9 squared equals that unknown side. Well, that's 81 plus 81. So if I take 81 plus 81, 
that's 162, and I take the square root of that, I get about 12.7279, and it goes on for a little bit longer. So that's what that is. And then I'm going to take that plus this side, which the easiest way to think about that is that this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle where we have a leg of 9 and a leg of 13 plus 9. So this is actually a length of 22 centimeters, if you think about it that way. So I can use Pythagorean theorem again. 22 squared plus 9 squared ends up being 565, so that side is the square root of 565, or 23.6797. So if I add this decimal and that decimal and 13, don't forget to add the number 13 to it, we get about 49.5 centimeters. Area, however, is a lot easier. Area of a triangle is base times the height. Now, height of a triangle connects the vertex to a side or extended side opposite from that at a right angle. So this 9 is actually the height of that triangle and this is 13 is your base of the triangle. So all you have to do is 13 times 9 and you get 117 square centimeters. Alright, if you have any more questions about example 3 feel free to ask them in class um, but make sure that you are getting these things copied down uh, and bringing any questions you have to class ready to talk about them. So let's talk about this final example. Now, if you've gotten started on this final example, you will notice that there is a little bit of a problem if you're paying attention. Before I even read the problem, if you look at this diagram, we have a triangle, which is obviously obtuse, where they say this is 9, but the height of the triangle is 12. Remember, this is actually the hypotenuse of this invisible right triangle. That length of 9 can't be less than this length of 12 because the hypotenuse has to be the longest. This is actually a typo. These are in the wrong place. This side is actually 9. This length is actually 12. So you've got to make those changes otherwise you're going to get very different answers than I did. And that's one way I'm going to tell whether you watch this video or not is did you make that change. So hopefully you're paying attention and you make that change now. Okay, This is actually 12 and this is 9. Otherwise, it gives us some really weird answers. Okay, So now we'll look at the actual situation. You need to buy enough boards to make the frame of the triangular playground shown below. And you need enough mulch to fill it. Well, the mulch covers square yards or square feet um, in this case. And that's an area measurement, so we need to know the area. And then the um, the boards to make the frame would be the perimeter. So those are the two measurements we need to find first, perimeter and area. And so I'm going to walk you through how to find this one. And if you already got the answer, again, just kind of skip to the end and make sure you got the right answer. Otherwise, pay attention to this so I can give you some guidance on how to do this. Perimeter is just adding up the sides, 20 plus 16 plus 12. Gives us a perimeter of 48 feet. Okay, and then area, that's another calculation I'm going to need, is this base 16 times this height, which we changed to 9. Okay, 16 times 9 is 144 square feet. So this is what the problem is asking you to find, though. If one board is 5 feet long and one bag of mulch covers 7 square feet, how many boards, how many bags of mulch do you need? And so we have 48 linear feet and they come in four feet long boards. So all we have to do is take our 48 and divide it by four. And that tells us we need 12 boards. So we have to buy that. And then we're going to take our square footage, 144, and it covers seven square feet per bag. So we're just going to take that and divide by seven. And we get approximately 20.57143. If you keep going a little bit further, you get some more decimals. But since I need more than 20 bags, I have to go ahead and purchase the 21st bag. And so that's how we find those answers, based on this perimeter and this area. Okay, and again, you got some different measurements if you didn't make those changes, so pay attention to doing that at the very beginning. Um, we have a little bit longer video if you're watching every single example, but hopefully you guys already had a lot of these answers figured out and have an idea how to go about this lesson. What I want you to do is make sure that you bring any questions that you have to class ready to talk about. You need to have two questions about this lesson or two things that you noticed about this lesson to talk about in class.